praise the Lord hallelujah we thank you Jesus we come together to honor and adore you we lift up holy hands to heaven to ask for your blessing as we walk under this open heaven to receive your double portion anointing we receive it right now Lord we open up our mouths and we confess that you alone are worthy to be praised and honored and adored you're the name above all names you're the king of kings you're the Lord of Lords you're my high priest you're my redeemer you're my Lord and my Savior and my God I will put nothing before you let my mind be focused and stayed on you let me be renewed let this inward renewal manifest in an outward transformation for your glory and your glory alone Lord I know that your heartbeat if people could just feel it pulsing and pulsing with the power is for souls 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 my goal that I have set on YouTube is to reach 2,000 souls you've given me a gift I operate in it I accepted the call I forsook all I picked up my cross I followed you some days it's been easy some days it's been hard but you've always showed up you've closed doors that didn't need to be open in my life and you've opened doors that through miracles and you told me to step through them that I couldn't open in myself and I thank you father I give you glory and honor and praise Lord I humble myself before you and submit to you Take this heavy yoke off of me and let me find rest and comfort in you. Rest for my soul. I long to be with you, Lord, but I know that I'm an earthen vessel filled with your spirit, walking around to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And I'm going to guard everything that comes out of my mouth. I'm going to speak peace and life and joy and happiness because you've taught me humility and patience the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us our teacher our helper into all truth of who you are through divine revelation right now in the name above all names Jesus just Jesus rain down revelation knowledge on us Lord we're hungry and thirsty for more of you let us decrease that you can increase we can't increase until we can't increase in our own Lord God can I just talk to you for a minute God can I just come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain your mercy to stop this stuttering and misquoting and just speak of the oracles of your glory and your goodness and your mercy and your grace let me forever remain teachable Jesus let my flesh decrease so that your power can increase so that I can learn wisdom knowledge and understanding but in all my getting Father God in the name of Jesus let me get understanding not peace like the world gives and not understanding like the world understands but revelation knowledge of who you are fully completely holy and who I am in you what my purpose and destiny is in you and through you and for you today today in the name of Jesus I bless everybody within the sound of my voice with the same prayer the same petition I just humble myself and sit at your feet Jesus waiting on you enduring this race as you as you unwind everything that the world the devils try to put on me as you t as you just dissolve yokes and sicknesses infirmities and things that have been building up on me from this evil world 
I tell you, saints, things of the world are becoming strangely dim. And it's just fine by me. Because I walk straight and narrow. I'm not swaying to the left and I'm not swaying to the right. I'm not listening to any man who's teaching me falsely or is in error. I'm walking in truth because I've been set free. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Shout Amen. Says Minister Paul. Wow. <laughs> it's 1237. 3 7. I'm going to address that 3 7. God just keeps showing up. You know, I'm tired. Hey, yeah, you know. <laughs> The power of God is all in this house. Um, you know, how many people think that, if, raise your hand if you think that uh, God doesn't know everything about you. You see them hands. <laughs> like when I say I'm tired, you think God don't know that? <laughs> he knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. He shows up in miracles and signs and wonders he knows tomorrow before it starts and you know we can't <laughs> we can't understand tomorrow until we figure out today what's our assignment for today who are we in Christ Jesus today what does Christ Jesus want for us today he wants us to be humble he wants us to take on his very fruit and nature he wants us to go win souls from darkness into the light. And he wants us to be more like him and less like the world. We can't get into tomorrow or next week or next year or September 17th until we figure out this moment right now. And the only way we're going to get there is through honor and submission and humbleness that's what I've learned of Jesus Christ in 48 years going around the world to these conferences is that it's all about humility humbleness love sharing and, and interceding for others to do what reach the lost at all cost spare no expense and I've learned to communicate to God. I've learned that He wants to hear from me. And when I speak, He answers. I've learned that the Holy Spirit is constantly talking. I'm just not constantly listening. But when I begin to listen, and I begin to ask for Him to teach me things, He has unlimited, infinite wisdom and revelation and knowledge and teachings and ideas for me. But it's just learning to listen. Being still and knowing that He alone is God. And He will be exalted. Matter of fact, we extol you. We exalt you and we extol you. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to our hearts and speak to our minds. This is Minister Paul. It's 9-2-2012. I already showed that. This is a very prophetic day. Uh, I've been uh, talking about numbers and not really understanding for several months. <clears throat> the very first speaker that opened up this conference three days ago, the very first thing out of his mouth, and he's been a prophet for working in the kingdom of God for 61 years. In October will be 61 years. He said this, this is the very first thing that opened up the whole conference of 5,000 people three days ago. He said, you know, the Lord works and, and does things in numbers. And I was amazed. And right then I knew how God was about me to take me on a four-day journey. But how many people know it's not what I was expecting? But it's exactly what I needed. I took a lot of heat. And I'm just going to get this out one time and for all because we're doing a holy fast to submit to God. Not man. Not any man. You're not submitting to me. You're not submitting to Benny Hinn. 
you're not submitting to your to your pastor or submitting to God. He's holy, he's sovereign. And when he speaks, entire nations listen. And we should count ourselves worthy to be able to hear from him that he chose us. If anybody's perfect, raise your hand. I see that hand. So you must be an angel. So we welcome the angels. The Bible says, I see that hand. The, the Bible says that be careful who you entertain because you might unwillingly entertain an angel. So that hand that went up that's perfect and has never done any wrong, that must be an angel. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there. Benny Hinn was only here one night. And I stood on my feet for five and a half hours. And I've gotten a lot of heat in my inbox, and even publicly, because I attended just, I wanted to meet him in person. My pastor, some people think they don't even need pastors, but throughout the Bible, do you know what Jesus did? He taught. He taught, he taught, he taught. People would come to him, and they'd ask him questions, and he'd answer their question with another question. Constantly teaching. Teaching us about what? The truth. And about the Father. And about the kingdom of God. Well, if you think, for those watching us, that you're above any teaching, God bless you, but I'm not. I came down here to learn something from men and women of God. The great patriarchs, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the great patriarchs, are all going home. They're all perishing. Look at Billy Graham. Some people may not like him. I've never met him. I'm not speaking for him. Three seven. I'm just saying that when we see Benny, uh, when we see Billy Graham and all these other greats that have dedicated, whether you agree with them or not, they dedicated their entire life as a youth to try to reach souls they may not be perfect neither am I but I'm going to address this Benny Hinn thing one time and for all before it just gets out of you know too ridiculous I, I'm, I'm down here for my family I'm down here to get refreshed and renewed because I've been pouring out into this thing for uh, since January and I needed to be refreshed I wouldn't have mattered if Benny Hinn was not. It wouldn't have mattered if he was here. I, I'll just share a little secret with you. I don't answer to man. I don't have a home church. I have a pastor that I meet every now and then and, and we talk or we discuss. I think you should always have someone you can call or text or when you need prayer. If you don't, God bless you. I'm not here to judge or condemn anybody. I'm here to talk about honor and submission <clears throat> last night for five and a half hours and I was told Benny Hinn's long winded I did nothing but pray for my wife and for you guys I, I was interceding I was interceding for healings, for miracles, for breakthroughs, for jobs, for healed relationships, for, you know. And I stood there weeping at the altar, not asking God for anything for myself. My feet hurt, my back was straining, dress shoes, hands let raised for five and a half hours after three days. And you know what was on my heart? My wife. My wife. I didn't ask God for anything for me other than to bless my wife who's at home and I wish she was here. And I woke up this morning to a bunch of correction and comments and inboxes about Benny Hinn being full of demons and this and that. Well, look. <clears throat> I didn't pray to Benny Hinn. Do you understand that? I didn't come down here for Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn didn't answer my prayers. I, I submitted to God. 
I prayed to God and I earned it into God's presence. Too many people so quick to condemn, and, but <clears throat> what are you doing for the kingdom of God? Faith without works is dead. What are you doing for the kingdom of God as you go around saying, if you think, let me, hallelujah, <clears throat> if you think Benny Hinn is full of demons, then pray for him. Pray for him. If that's what you truly think, pray for him. He's not my pastor. He just happened to be at this conference. But I'm going to tell you what God did for me last night through my, my prayers. As Benny Hinn was on the stage and I'm in front of the altar with hundreds of other people. Because I was selfless and praying for others. I called my wife this morning first thing. She said she got on. She was supposed to go out with the friends she used to hang out with. The friends that I didn't want her hanging with while I was gone because they drink and, and just do things that I didn't want her to get reassociated with, you know. I'm not saying they're bad people. It's just not the lifestyle I want for her and I. I want a godly lifestyle, a righteous lifestyle. And they're living ungodly lives. That's as honest as I could be. And she, her plan was to spend Friday and Saturday night with them. People that we haven't hung out with in years. Because I was out of town. Well, let me tell you what God did for me. Can I, can I just testify? Can I testify instead of put somebody down? Today, can I testify as we fast and pray to God? As we submit to God, can we be real with each other? Last night and the night before, Friday night, my wife tuned in and watched the entire thing and got her fire back. She's on fire for God. Matter of fact, that's her calling right now. That just, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. It's God first always with me. Last night, as I was at the altar Saturday night, praying for her, she didn't go. Now listen to me. If you don't want to listen, go to another channel. If you want to learn something, then listen to what I have to say. I choose my words carefully. God's showing up here with miracles. This computer wouldn't even work yesterday. And I said, give me a sign, God, and it booted up. My wife didn't go out Friday night. She stayed home. My wife didn't go out Saturday night. No, I mind if she goes out. No, she could go out wherever she wants. I trust her with everything within me. I just want her to be careful who she hangs out with. Because I know this world has a way of pulling you back into it. So I was standing in the gap for her. I was interceding for her. I was making up that hedge. But I can't do it on my own, so I had to go to a higher source, and his name is Jesus. And he had her stay home, and she watched the entire service. And as Benny began to sing, she wept. Do you know she's lost her mother and brother, never really fully been healed for that. And I know that, and I live with that, and I pray for it every day. But I never mention it. Well, she was getting emotionally healed. Last night, through my prayers to God, in the presence of the Lord, as I'm his servant. And I got to wake up to hate mail and judgmental people and, and people that, that, that just have nothing good to say about anybody. While I'm experiencing miracles and I'm praying for others and my wife's being healed, I got to wake up to this stuff because of one guy. That I didn't even really come here for. I came here to be refreshed and renewed. You want to judge Benny Hinn? Go ahead. I'm not. I'm not a judge and I'm not a condemner. If you think he's full of demons, then you're to pray for him. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not even going to mention who's speaking anymore. Because you can Google anybody on the internet. Find somebody you're following. And I guarantee you. If they're out soul winning or doing something, you can Google their name and just put such and such. Put T.D. Jake's false prophet. Put John Hagee false prophet. And then you'll see that there's none righteous. No, not one. The whole internet has full of people condemning these people to hell. That they're full of demons. 
as they go around talking about Jesus Christ. I'm not going to judge them. Is he perfect? I don't know. I don't hang with them. I don't roll with them. He's probably a multi-millionaire living somewhere. It has no effect on my life. All I know is I, I found an altar. I went to it, and my wife got an emotional healing. And that's all that matters. I don't need to hear your drama about who I'm supposed to follow. I don't need you to dictate to me on how I'm supposed to pray. I serve God. And he keeps showing up. No one will convince me otherwise because I'm 48 years old and I've been through hell. You think he's full of demons? I was full of more demons than you will probably ever encounter in your lifetime. I used to serve Satan. Go watch my testimony from light to darkness and back to light. I know what Satan smells like. I know what he feels like. I know what he sounds like. I can sense any of his presence when he comes around me. It's called the gift of discernment. And I got it when I was set free by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's just raining down on me. Satan wasn't at that altar when I prayed for my wife. It was me and my high priest. And what manifested was a healing. If you want to attribute that to Satan, then I rebuke you. You got a problem with Benny Hinn, take it up with Benny Hinn. But don't bring your nonsense and your drama to this channel as we do a holy fast submitting to God. I don't care who gets up on that stage. I'm going to worship God. If I feel a demon come around me, which I have in this conference, I'm going to rebuke it. Matter of fact, let me tell you my integrity level. Don't ever question my integrity. 21 years as uh, protecting people, protecting their lives with my life. Never once was my integrity questioned. But suddenly in the ministry, it's coming under scrutiny and in a microscope every single day. I find that amazing. But see, the battle that puts before me is just a reward as I conquer it. You, where you see a battle, I see reward. Fear comes around me, I send faith. Confusion comes around me, and doubt, I send faith. Demons come around me, I plead the blood of Jesus. And it's going to be like that any church you go into. That's why I don't go to church where I live. We have church in our house, because we control the atmosphere. But I came down here to learn something. And I have about this much stack of notes. And I'm telling you, when you get 5,000 people in a room all praising God, you will never convince me that there was a demon around me. Because I used to hang with demons. And I know there was no demon. I didn't sense one. If there was, I would have rebuked it. If it didn't leave, I would have turned and left. You want proof of that? There was a, I'm not going to mention names. I'm not a name. I've been saying this since 2009 in videos. I'm not a name dropper. The speaker today is the one that I really wanted to avoid because it showed the 10 speakers. The praise and worship has been phenomenal. I, Minister Paul, loves him some praise and worship. Love me some praise and worship. That's why you see me on here trying to sing when I can't. Because I just love praising and worshiping God. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. This man, all he talked about was money. Do you see, when you, when you see like TBN and these TV channels, do you know they're required to ask for money? They have to ask for money to pay for their TV time and to support the network. That's why I don't really like watching pastors on TV. But I found if you just go pull them aside and meet them in person, they're human just like you. They have to ask for money to support their ministry. You show me a, a, a pastor with the 5,000 souls that he's won to the Lord, I'm going to show you a man who has some bills to pay. If not, his church is empty. What's he really doing for the kingdom of God? You, you understand what I'm getting at? I'm not going to put up my mouth on anybody. 
But when this man began to speak about money, see, there's always one they bring to the conference because conferences cost money. This, this is this is a hundred and sixty dollar room. They're only charging us forty seven dollars. The sound, it's being live streamed all around the world. People are getting blessed. I don't care what anybody on here says. I don't know, Minister Paul, I don't care. Sometimes I don't get involved in the drama and the debates and the division. I bring unity and one accord, wholeness, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, and edification and encouragement through testimonies and teachings and revelations and prophecy. That's my walk. I don't judge you on your walk. I don't know why everybody keeps trying to judge me on mine. Because we're not judges. I'd had about had it with the whole thing being money. Because, see, I, in 2007, I went to a church that was all about the money. And that's what got me in the business of making all this money. But I sold all that. Do you understand that? I sold my business. I sold everything associated with it. The cars. The, you know, I'm done with it. I gave it up. I gave up the money. So when he be, he's the one guy that has to try to raise funds to pay for this whole conference. There's always one. Any conference you go to, you can get blessed. But look, you can, you choose to receive into your spirit what you want in your spirit. You make the choice. When When you become when you realize who you are in Christ Jesus and you learn to follow Jesus in his will and you submit to him he'll tell you when there's error he'll show you where there's sin and he'll tell you when if you're to depart from it he didn't tell me to depart last night so I didn't and my wife got a healing did Benny Hinn do that no God did through what Jesus Christ did on the cross so praise him praise God Forget about people. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for what you did last night. And what you're going to do tonight and tomorrow, too. There's going to be an anointing service. Now, I should not uh, go up there and eagerly desire this double portion anointing that I myself have been prophesying about. That's what he's going to do. Uh, the Morris. He's going to lay hands, and I'm sure a lot of people here think he's a false prophet too, but I'm going to let him lay hands on me, and you're going to see God's power manifest with the, through the double portion anointing. Even the Bible says go to the elders and get hands laid on. So I got up when he began to take offerings, you know how they do the thousand, I need 120 people like the upper room to get an upper room anointing. I asked God. He said, get up and walk out. Show them that you're a man of integrity. And my pastor was working the door as an usher in front of 5,000 people. I said, I don't want money. I got rid of money. And then he started giving an altar call uh, uh, for your money for um, the anointing. And I asked God, because he said, my anointing ain't for sale. So you got to hear from God. And I just sent a brother on here a big long message about it. And I hope he understands, brother or sister, I'm not sure. That, look, we can't operate in offense. We can't let people be stumbling blocks. We, we have, do you know the Bible is full of instructions and your life is a journey of decisions? God doesn't live your life for you and the devil doesn't live your life for you. You live your life through a process and series of decisions. And every decision you make will affect your tomorrow. The decisions you make today is what's going to be your tomorrow. Because you did it. Not somebody, stop doing the blame game. Because you chose to either believe something or not believe it. To either receive something or not receive it. To go this way or to go that way. And everything I do... I make sure I hear from the Holy Spirit first. And I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. People keep calling me pastor. I'm not a pastor. I've never said that. I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who was and is and is to come. Who's received a prophetic anointing over his life to say thus says the Lord boldly. Pastors I believe 
they 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 have these flocks that they oversee and they're responsible for. I know a lot about pastors. I was raised up in the church. I've worked in the church in leadership positions. Pa pastoring is a very tough job. Your phone's ringing all day long with people in need, and you have to be there for them. You're accountable. I'm just ministering out God's word. If you're getting fed by it, then praise God. Not you know, don't don't thank me. Thank God that He counted me worthy enough to gift me. So let's. So are we done with all the judgment? Can we just get past that on the internet and serve God? Let's go to the Word. Romans thirteen. Because I did, I, I, I grabbed my Bible, I grabbed my notepad, and I got up and I walked out. And I walked right past the pastor in Sacramento. And he looked at me kind of strange. I said, I'll see you later. And I walked out. I didn't give a dime. Didn't give a dime. People were given thousands. My minister, Paul, wasn't led to give a dime. The man's already a multimillionaire that was on stage. Multi, multi-millionaire. Do I want advanced kingdom? God's kingdom? Absolutely. Do I want souls to be one to the Lord? Yes. Do I want my wife healed? Yes. Do I, do I want to be the, get, receive the double portion anointing? Yes. Do I think I can buy it? No. Do I believe in seed time and harvest? Yes. Do I believe that God gives seed to the sower? Yes. Do I want to be a sower? Yes. Do I think all sowing is money? No. I can sow hope. I can sow the word of God. So let me sow some word into you. Romans 13. And, and I've done three things on Romans 13 this month already. So I know this is of God. Wherefore you, you must needs be subject not only for wrath. But also for conscience sake. Verse 6. Romans 13.6. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Now, if someone's going around the world preaching Jesus Christ crucified and people are being healed, I'm not going to judge them. That's God's job. If God tells me to depart from them, I'll depart from them. Several people even here on YouTube, God told me to depart from them. They're up to no good. I'll depart from them. But I still pray for them. If if I just like the guy down there, I, I prayed for him the whole time. He's just having people raise their hands and beg for money and pray for money. You know what I was doing? I wasn't rebuking him or judging him or condemning him. I was praying for him. See, that's integrity. Not judge him. You got to get to a. You want to go to a higher level? Do you want to go to a higher level in God? Do you want a double portion anointing? Then the judgment has to stop, and you need to submit yourself to a higher authority. And there's none higher than God. And you need to take your mouth off of others, even if you think they're their, you're their enemies. You're still to pray for them. Remember. Romans 13 verse 8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. I love everybody in this hotel. I love everybody on YouTube. I have to. I'm commanded to. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. And then it talks about, in 9, it talks about the Ten Commandments. You know the Ten Commandments are all based on one thing. Honor. There's a lot of people, I'll give you a revelation, a word of knowledge. There's a lot of people watching this video who've been hurt by churches. Wherever you will find dishonor, you'll find hurt. That your hurt is tied to dishonor. There's a lot of people. The first four commandments are about honoring God. The rest are about honoring others. Honor your father and mother. How many people here? Where's my thing? How many people here can honestly say you've done everything within your entire being to honor your mother and father? If you haven't, then I'll show you dishonor. And you know, the prisons are full of dishonorable people. Dishonor is not supposed to be in the kingdom of God. That's why God wrote the Ten Commandments. They're based on honor. 
honor will lead you to God's favor. Dishonor will lead you back to the world. And you know what the world will bring you? Hurt and pain. That's why I honored my mother all the way to the last breath she took. And I'm honoring my father. No matter what I may think about him or may, when he wasn't there for me when I was young. I've forgiven him. I operate in forgiveness. Uh, Satan has no legal grounds uh, to, to hold me through dishonor. Because I'm honoring my mother and my father. You know why? Because God commanded it. And then Jesus came and he said, you know what? You can sum up all these in one thing. Loving one another. If you love one another, you won't do but break those things. You'll be an honorable man of integrity or an honorable woman of integrity. You show me someone that's walking in obedience and submission and honor, and I'll show you somebody that's under God's favor. You want to open heaven. You want a double portion anointing. But you don't want to walk in love. There's people you don't want to forgive, and you don't want to honor. Well, you know what the opposite of honor is? dishonor love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law and and that knowing that the time what time is it is the end time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And one of the works of darkness is dishonor. One of the works of dis, uh, darkness is condemning and judging others. One of the works of dishonor is not loving them as you were commanded to do. Not honoring them. Not praying for them. God says to pray without ceasing. If you're too busy to, to be, if you're so busy judging and condemning others, you know what that tells me? You're not praying. This is a fast and pray. Don't bring, I've opened up the comments and I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to let God judge them at the end of the day. Because you know what? I'm setting up plans for tomorrow. But it's not promised. But if it is promised, today when I wake up, I will have known that I did a life that was pleasing to God. How? Through love and honor and integrity in faith to one and one alone. And that's God. I know this is a tough word, but I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit. Let us walk honestly. You show me dishonor, I'll show you dishonest, dishonesty. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, and not in strife and envying. You show me a jealous person or a judgmental person or a condemning person, I'll show you someone that needs to go forgive somebody and go honor someone that God has commanded them to honor. Go forgive someone that God has commanded them to forgive. And, in, and, and this is the most important thing I've done entire uh, teachings on this. What are we going to do? Today, we're going to tell the devil, you get out of my life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blood of Jesus is raining over me. The blood of Jesus, it covers me. I'm robed in his righteousness. I don't have time to judge others. I don't have time to condemn others. I've been called to love. I've been called to, to, to speak of his love, his goodness, and his mercy, and his grace. I'm so busy praying and praising God that I don't have time to see the bad in others. I'm too busy praying for them. You know why? Because 14 says that I've put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Just put on Jesus Christ. He paid the price. With sacrifice. Obey Him. Let's stop this division and strive and be pleasing to God. Let's present ourselves to God a living sacrifice. Is anybody with me? Make not provision for the flesh. You so you show me somebody judging somebody, condemning somebody, putting their mouth on somebody, and I'll show you somebody operating in the flesh and not in the spirit. Because if they were operating in the Holy Spirit, and I'm not judging anybody, I'm just saying a blanket statement to the world, not in any. Please, I mean that. I I got I got probably a hundred comments right now that I don't have time to respond to. You show me somebody that is dishonoring somebody.
putting them down, saying they're full of demons rather than praying for them, saying stay away from them, I'll show you somebody that's in the flesh. Because if you were operating in the Holy Spirit, in obedience and in submission to God, you'd be loving them and you'd be praying for them. Because if you're in the flesh, it says you will fulfill the lusts. Uh, and you know where lust comes from? The world through sin. And we've been set free from sin. And we're to walk in our freedom. See, Satan wants to get you tied back up in bondage. But I've been set free. And I refuse to let any man, any woman, any devil in hell, any demon, yoke me up into bondage after being set free by Jesus Christ and so that revelation knowledge that I've received I'm gonna share it with you forgive somebody today love somebody today if you think someone's full of demons today I don't care who they are they may be the neighbor across the street they may be one of your family members they may be a man on TV pray for them because isn't it about all souls getting to heaven? Not just the ones that you want to get to heaven, but God's heartbeat is souls, souls, souls. And you don't get a pick and choose who gets to heaven or, or not. You're to submit to God and obey His commandments. And then when Jesus Christ came and fulfilled the law, He said, you know how you fulfill the law? Through love. And how much did he love us? He gave his life for us. Now what if Jesus Christ came down right now and looked right at you? And judged you on your past? Or what you're doing now? Instead of mercy and grace, just started picking you apart. See, we expect mercy. Hallelujah. And we expect grace. And we expect the anointing. But it comes at a price. And that price is called sacrifice. That price is called obedience. That price is called honoring others. And loving them. And above all, walking in integrity. And having faith. I'm not going to put my mouth on anybody today. And the people that have, have came against uh, uh, this ministry in my inbox and stuff like that. I'm going to pray for you. Because I'm commanded to even right now I pray for anybody who's left a negative comment or, or tried to interrupt this fast or disturb this fast Father God go before me right now through the Holy Spirit and go bless them open their eyes open their ears I speak life I speak healing I speak deliverance I speak peace I speak shalom I'm operating in your in obedience. I submit to you, God, and I pray. I pray for everybody within the sound of my voice, whether they like me or not, whether they judge me or not, whether they're my enemy or not, it's irrelevant. I pray to you, Father God, that you alone are the only judge. You alone are the only God. And Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And he told me to love all and forgive all and forsake all and I'm doing that and I'm seeing miracles after miracles after miracle healing years now years healing after healing after healing freedom after freedom after freedom provision after provision after provision in closing I just want to put out some word today. Be strong. Whatever you do today, do it unto the Lord. Forgive somebody today. Love somebody today. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you this. Every, for the next seven days, you can receive this or not, it's up to you. I just put it out there. For the next seven days, spend the first seven minutes of your day in communication with to God through the Holy Spirit. Talk, you know you can talk to the Holy Spirit. 
That's why he came down here. He was he's your helper, he's your guide. Holy Spirit, what can I do today? What's in me that doesn't need to be in me? What, what what's supposed to come out of me that's not coming out of me? Who can I bless today? Uh what path am I supposed to take today? S the first 7 minutes of every day for 7 days spend communicating with God. He loves to talk to you. He loves to hear from you and he loves to answer you. Try it. Wake up and spend the first seven minutes with God for the next seven days. And you watch how the rest of your day goes. In seven days from now, you're going to be at a whole nother level. Through the anointing. Double portion. Let's close out and I'm call my wife. Let's go to Job. We're talking about the numbers three and seven that I'm still seeing. Job 42, uh, we'll start with 11. Now now look, everybody say, I repeat after me, I'm not ready to die yet. I will never die. I am a spirit. I'm going to heaven. I can do all things through Christ who, who gives me strength. I'm going to tell you about a man, Job, briefly in closing. Everybody wanted him dead. The world wanted him dead. His own wife said, are you still going to sit there in your integrity? Curse God and die. He lost everything. And he said, no. Though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Yeah, I may have lost this. Yeah, I may have lost that. But I'm not ready to die. I'm not done. I haven't finished my mandate. I accepted a call to God. I met God. And I encountered him. And, and I, I trust him. And I have faith in him. And I'm going to honor him. And I'm not ready to die. I haven't finished what he's called me to do yet. This is for somebody. You haven't finished what God has called you to do yet. The devil wants to depress you. Isolate you. Convict you. Accuse you. But you just tell him, look, I'm not ready to die. Spiritually or physically. Verse 10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When? Ver, uh, 42 verse 10, When he prayed for his friends. Now watch this. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now let's, let's, let's go deeply into this 42 uh, 10. God didn't give Job... Uh, originally new stuff that he never had before this is a deep revelation the Bible says that the, the devil comes to steal kill and destroy it says he went before the throne and he said consider thy servant Job see I'm a servant and I'm not level, letting the devil steal anything from me not from your mouth not from the devil's mouth not from the accuser of the brethren not from the demons not from the world because I'm not ready to die I'm ready to multiply I'm ready to go to a higher level in Jesus Christ through the double portion anointing. And I, I, you have to show, study to show thyself approved. Amen. The devil took all that stuff from Job. God gave it back. Some people have lost a lot of things. God didn't take them from you. The devil did. You stand there in your obedience, and in the next seven days, God is going to start restoring and reconciling everything back to you. Seven minutes in the morning. Do this fast for seven days. And spend seven minutes every morning. Pray without ceasing. But start your day before you even go to the bathroom, before you even take a drink of water, before you even brush your teeth. If you say, oh, I got to go, you don't know how busy my life is, then wake up seven minutes earlier. Spend that seven minutes talking to God, and you will get answers. And seven days from now, on 7-9-2012, that double portion anointing will rain down on you, because we are in the end time open heaven of God pouring out His Spirit. Not only did he return, God returned to Job because he stood there in his integrity and obedience to God. Not only did he return, 
uh, what the devil stole. Because God didn't take it, the devil did. It says also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now is it wrong for us to ask things from God? Not according to that. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Now listen to this. And all his sisters and all they that had been of acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold and someone say God's favor because of his obedience <sighs> 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. That's what's coming in this end time latter rain, double portion anointing. The latter will be greater than your former, and it's coming, saints, quicker than you know. For he had 14,000 sheep. God don't speak in numbers. 6,000 camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen. And a thousand donkeys or mules. He had a lot, but he went through a lot. Now watch this. There's somebody that's going to receive this word. I know this. To whom much is given, much is required. A lot was tested and, and required of Job, but he never gave up on God. And he got, look at everything he got. He didn't only get back what the devil stole. He got back double. In verse 13 in closing, as we just honor God and thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. And we ask the Holy Spirit to have his way through this fast. In verse 13, this is a rhema revelation. August 2nd, 2012. Now word. That just hit me last night like a ton of bricks upside my head. He also had, watch this, seven sons and three daughters. There's the seven and there's the three. Seven, three. Showed up again. Now go down to this, 16. After this, Job lived 140 years. How'd you like to live 140 years? In total provision and no lack, under God's favor, having endured all trials, and, in, and, and, and never losing your integrity once. The devil had to get leave, and God just poured out his favor on you. And you lived to be 140 years. And he saw his sons and his sons' sons and even four generations. And then and then 17 and ending. You'd have to read the whole book of Job to fully understand it. And really appreciate what Job went through. I have several times. So Job died. When, when, it, when God said it was his time, not when the devil said it was time or his family said it was time or his wife said it was time or the world said it was time, when God said it was time because he chose to honor God. Being old and full of days. There's that number 7-3 again. And there's a 7-3 in closing, I know. I don't know why I keep doing this, but in obedience, see the 7, the 5-2, five, 5-2, two, five, two, and then the 2-1, that's a 7-3. Job had seven sons and three daughters. Someone just sent me a video, by the way, too, and a testimony. I got so much to say. Um, I think I'm just going to rest and get ready to go back to it and call my wife. I just pray, above all. Don't judge me. If you got, you know, I don't mind a private comment to try to, you know. How about, how about for just, during, how about for the next seven days? How about just sending me blessings? Bless me with, with prayers. How, how about, I mean, how about, how about living a godly life? 
you know, all these, I got to wake up to this, these corrections and how everybody knows everything and everybody's full of demons. How about for the next seven days, we just start giving God the glory. You want to inbox me a message? How about saying, I just want to tell you that God loves you and he loves me and we're going to heaven. How about speaking life over me? Let me see this. That's a sign. This thing's blinking again. But there's no dial tone. This happened yesterday. Do you see it? It's blinking. But it's just a dial tone. Miracle signs and wonders in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your miracle. If you don't like... Uh, I think I've said everything there is to say. I, I want I want to bring unity. I'm tired of division. I'm tired of strife. I'm tired of discord. I'm tired of judgmental people. I'm tired of people coming to correct me when I've been walking with God. You know, I've been through hell. I made it through serving Satan and God brought me out to, and gave me this prophetic gift. I'm tired of trying somebody who knows everything to come tell me that I'm at the wrong altar while my wife's getting healed. I don't really honestly don't want to hear it. I'm not in offense. I want to hear from God. And the things that I'm getting in my inbox, some of them are from God, some aren't. If you don't have anything good and encouraging and edifying, because the Bible says to focus on those things a good report. You're focusing on the wrong things. And we're fasting and praying for a double portion anointing, but we're going to focus and judge others. What's holy about that? For once, can I just get a message that says, God bless you? Instead of all these error, errors you think I'm in and sin you think I'm in, I get enough of that. You know, I long to be with the Lord. But it, as long as he has me down here, I'm going to speak peace and life and encouragement and edification and exhortation over his children. I'm going to serve him and walk in obedience and honor and integrity and faith. And I'm going to rebuke the devil when he comes around me. But what I'm not going to do is judge others. I'll just keep putting his... his I, what I did was I just planted God's holy word, which is a seed, into the feed. Now some of this will fall on stony ground, and other of it will fall on good ground. I pray, Lord God, for good ground. I pray for souls. I pray that I reach that 2,000. I pray that I finish this race with endurance and that fulfill my mandate, the purpose. I know that you're a God of purpose. You've called me for a purpose. You've defined the purpose. I pray for your help through the Holy Spirit to help me fulfill my purpose in life which includes these people listening their edification their healing their miracle give them a sign Lord teach them to guard their mouth because out of it comes blessing, blessings and curses teach them about integrity and honor increase their faith Teach us how to pray, Lord. I'm going to do a service. God bless you all. I love you. Remember when the disciples came to Jesus, they said, teach us how to pray. As we're going through the seven-day fasting and prayer, when I get home, if you remind me, I'm going to do a thing on teaching others. Some people don't know how to pray. Jesus' own disciples didn't know how to pray. You want to know how to pray? God, in the name of Jesus, I could use your help right now. Do you have a minute to talk to me? And then just begin to pour out your heart on what you're feeling. I'm tired. My feet hurt. And I could use a little strength right now because I still got another day and a half to go down there. Could you could you strengthen me? God, I'm trying to reach these people with limited time. Can you can you somehow go before me and, and open doors for them? It's, it's just having a conversation with your Heavenly Father. Knowing that he's your father and you're his child. 
teach us how to pray, Lord, in honor, in integrity, and in faith. Peace. And Lord God, confirm this word. 